Spotify has finally come clean and revealed the exact number of streams that you need to have if you want to get paid. Because if you don't have this amount of streams, you're not getting paid. But also, if you do decide to continue to use Spotify and not boycott, then you're going to have to change your strategy. So we're going to talk about what your strategy needs to look like or how you need to measure up your numbers if you want to get paid. That's going to have a massive impact. Two, if you do decide to be one of those people to say, hey, we don't need to be on Spotify anymore, we're going to talk about what that would look like as well and how that impacts Spotify on this episode of No Labels Necessary. Check it out. All right, let's get to it. Spotify said you need to have 1,000 streams. If the fans can't see how many streams and plays you have, <laughs> you don't get paid. Oh, no. 1,000 <laughs> streams? It's so much worse than we thought it would be. Don't get that less than symbol or you aren't getting paid, period. Yes. But there's some specifics to this, for real. So Music Business Worldwide out here breaking news yet again, all right, has confirmed 1,000 streams, but this is 1,000 streams per song in a year's time. These specifics all mean something, so we're going to talk about these specifics because people will miss a lot of them, right, in the nuances. One, a thousand streams on a specific song per year. That per year means it doesn't roll over, right? I don't know if you ever, like in the cell phone plan, had rollover minutes or not had rollover minutes. I remember back in like singular days, like having rollover minutes was like a big thing. Singular uh -huh. wireless, ain't not even around no more. Uh -huh. But don't age me like that. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that to yourself. <laughs> but. If you get a thousand streams on your track, you will get paid. That's around six dollars and everything after that, right? But if you go the next year and that same track doesn't get a thousand streams, you will not get paid that money. So it's not just about hitting a thousand streams one time. You have to do it year over year over year as an incentive, right? It's almost like a commission based or reward mm -hmm. system. You need to hit that minimum barrier. All right, that quota. That's what is a better way to say all this stuff. Y'all got quotas now on Spotify. Yeah, facts. Yeah. What's the other side of that, though? The other side of it, again, is per year and per track. Well, if I got a 10 song album, right, and I got 10 songs that have 900 streams each, I have 9,000 streams, but no individual song has 1,000 streams. Mm, I didn't even think about that. So since it's per track, you still won't get paid. And now we're going from 6 to $54 that I'm not getting. Damn, I didn't even think about that. Oh, that's so interesting, man, because it's like, because we talked about this. I, I don't remember if it was off camera on the other episode, but I was saying it, it feels like Spotify is trying to uh, – disincentivize the the like mass song drop strategy that's kind mm -hmm. of been really popular over the last couple of years and they're forcing you to be more intentional with your releases right like hey make sure either you are very confident that this shit gonna go you know <coughs> relative to this number or that you plan to put a little spin into it you know get to get the juices flowing before you put this shit out because mm -hmm. if not you just waste it you know I don't know if this episode come out before or after the, the 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 money long episode, but it's like nah, you just wasted, you know that that whole number that Miss Money Long, you know what I'm saying, gave us like you just wasted your budget. So that's 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 crazy. That's because it if it, it feels like you would think they would want to incentivize that in in a way. I guess not. Yeah, no, no, nah, nah, yeah, I won. I don't think that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, I want to say before we go move on to this should actually help artists understand why labels use bots okay and now what i mean by that mm -hmm. and this is not P a psa telling you to use bots if anything it's a psa not to use bots in addition to especially everything that spotify is about to do but again i'm just explaining to you why it's a relevant thing to do all right because now artists are in this situation except you know, it's not the exact same. Smaller numbers and everything. Imagine you have 900 streams on a track and you can't get paid. All right? So you say, you know what? What if I could just bot 100 streams to unlock 
everything else. Mm -hmm. I now can get money. I, most of these are real, but I just need this little, this little nudge over the ceiling. You know what I mean? And now I can get, um, get my payout that I well deserved. Why would I stop the goalpost? I'm on a one yard line, and bro, you're not letting me get this touchdown. This is crazy. Yeah, no, right? you're right. Yeah. Labels, a lot of times, people who are in labels, and I'll re explain this for people who haven't heard us have those discussions. You'll have budgets that artists cannot get. And sometimes the label strategy will suck. I don't think that we even touched on that side. A label strategy can suck, and they say, hey, start with this song or do this strategy. And a part of the reason that your song isn't performing to where it is or should be in a certain period of time, because that's what labels want to see before they clear out the rest of the budget, right? It's because of some of the stuff that the label's done or factors you can't control. So you're like, all right, man, they're about to kill the rest of my project, right? If I don't get these extra 10,000 streams in this period of time, let me go ahead and, you know, run that up yeah. just so I can open up the rest of it and live another day, right? I digress, but I wanted to make that clear because all of these conversations we're having around the business and the way different characters and stakeholders move in the business. Sometimes you can't relate. So it just seems weird or odd or you don't get it. I feel like more artists will get it now when they're at 990 streams. Now they might not care because it's only $6. Some of them might not care, but even off of the principle, you're like, bro, like I can't get paid just because I don't have 10 streams. It's like when you get a 99 on a, <laughs> on a test and you like, for real, like you couldn't just give me that one point. Yeah, bro. Like when you overdraft your car because you're like a dollar short or something. You're like, man, you can't, can't let that slide, man. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't let that slide. <laughs> <laughs> so, so those are just a couple of things. But like the strategically, you know, we have to look at things from Spotify's view as well. All right. And we kind of mm -hmm. just went through some of a conversation about well, who does Spotify want on the platform and who doesn't Spotify want on the platform, right? And does it matter if your presence is on the platform of Spotify or not? All right, we talked about boycotting. Like some people are like, oh, I don't want to be on a platform. And you earlier touched on, well, hey, Spotify in many cases might be like, ah. Please. Yes, please. Please, <laughs> please get off. Go. No, please go. Please get off. Get on because <laughs> you've been taking extra energy away from me. That's how they could look at it. All right. When you look at the technical aspect of the transaction fees um, and just the management of so much music coming out to the platform in and of itself. And the weird thing about Spotify is not the clean tech where it's just the programming energy that goes into it mm -hmm. that then allows people to use it because it's music there's these personal account managers and relationships mm -hmm. and it's not for the same and it's not for a lot of money yeah. right? same way y'all are complaining about money spotify complaining about money too yeah like you're talking about a company that's, that's losing money many years of its existence all right Mo more than not so it's something to think about. But I think what artists need to hear more than anything, just to be aware of, is the fan energy that's coming from this. Because I think it's kind of surprising. But we're actually starting our last video. Trust the plus in the comments said, I'm okay with this change. Before they even knew what this number was, by the way. I'm, I'm okay with this. And this is coming from somebody who will get iced by this, meaning... He's somebody who is not going to get paid because of this change. But what did he add? He said, it's time people who do music to make a choice, get serious or move on. Besides, Spotify is not the only streaming platform. If you are reliant upon making money from one stream source, you are missing the bag. Hey, man, that brother spitting. That's an interesting take from an artist. Yeah. Especially for somebody who's not included, right, in this batch. Yeah, but he sounds like an artist that, you know, pays attention when he listens to us. <laughs> and he, he makes a great point. There are dozens of streaming platforms. People put so much stock in the Spotify because the higher level of the industry puts so much stock in the Spotify. And you say this all the time, man. Like, you essentially are, are abiding by the, the rules of a losing game. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're, you're playing by the rules of a game you were yeah. not designed to, to, to win. win. You know yeah. what I'm saying? 
versus all these other games that you can go play and you have a, a better chance of playing of winning not only because the rules are different but because less people even know they can play the game or desire to play the game right exactly everybody wants to play in the nba you know what I'm saying? But not too many people want to go cash out in them, you know, like them international leagues and shit. You know what I'm saying? You can make money either way. You ain't got to be in the NBA. But it's true. Know, for whatever reason, you don't want to go over to go to Italy and make your bag. You know? That's, That's a how great I look analogy, at it. analogy because it doesn't come with the glitz and glam mm -hmm. and the initial dream that you had. And maybe, right, that dream is not what you thought it was. So mm -hmm. you have to have the ability to move on, right? And live. If you care so much about the art and want to live that existence, Finding a different platform is just fine. I remember before I was even in music, I read a quote about Miguel, and he said something. To, uh, it was Miguel, like the artist Miguel. He was talking about when you have that dream and, and it have, um, and you know you want to be this artist. The industry life that has ways of weeding out the people who don't really want it, mm. right? Facts. Like there are going to be things that occur. <laughs> And it's going to be hard regardless. And this is still like pre-Spotify era when I think about him saying these things, mm -hmm. you know. So if $6 is standing in the way of your music career, come on. Uh, right? A thousand streams? A thousand streams. Crazy. I understand. <laughs> I understand. Like maybe if you are offended on the principal aspect of things. Cool. That's something to argue and debate about. But if it in any way is going to deter you from using the platform, um, <laughs> cool if you want to go again, go off a of principle. But if it more than deters you, but discourages you, because I've seen people say, "Well, think about what the message that's sending the indie artists or the small artists, bro." If you're sad and you're gonna stop creating music, or you're like, "I'm not gonna pursue my career because they created a barrier," duh. Like, come on. And you didn't want it. And at least this is a barrier you can see. Cause you're gonna run into some barriers that you don't even understand. Like you're gonna start feeling like a mom, like, damn, it's a wall here, but I don't yeah. really I don't really understand what this this wall is. Then the crazy part about it is I learned this when I first worked my first official, official job at Pizza Hut. And I talked to you about this when you have your manager, right? I was there and I like the manager or whatever, but everybody else was there a lot longer. They loved the manager. And soon after I was there, another manager came. And everybody who was there before, they were in uproar. They didn't mess with the new system. And people did leave. Me, I was, you know, I just met the person, so I didn't miss them that much. And the, the new system wasn't a shock for me. But after I had that manager for about six, eight months, and then that manager left. I kind of felt like those other people was like, dang, man, this new person, I don't know, the system ain't like, <laughs> it's not hitting like it used to. So people are always going to complain with change regardless if you have enough time to get used to it. But if Spotify came out the gate with this, people just wouldn't have thought about it at all. Yeah. Because we've already talked about how natural it is for many of the, like, the people who pay out per stream, view, et cetera, have some level of quota that you get before you can monetize oh yeah yeah we gotta talk about that because yeah. you know b before the number came out you know we were going to speculate and i was telling sean you know i think that it's going to be a hundred dollar payout because i was yeah. like you know instagram has a hundred dollar payout um youtube's minimum payout you got to hit a hundred mm -hmm. i think tiktok might be around there i could be wrong y'all let me know so i started doing the math and i was like oh a hundred dollars on spotify is twenty five thousand to thirty thousand yeah. streams you know what i'm saying if it was up to me I think that's a that's a fair number to hit. Hey, I don't want to deal with these processing fees until you make at least a hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? So you get twenty five to thirty k streams. Now Spotify is being nice enough to say like, hey, it's a thousand, right? Which you brought the point at the at the beginning of the podcast. You don't even get rid of that little. I don't know the, what's the sign, the ampersand sign, whatever. It's, I, I feel like it's wrong, but the whatever sign until you get a thousand and one streams, which for a very long time perception wise has been like when you've hit the race right like yeah. when you finally when True. your numbers finally show up you on spotify already yep. you know what i'm saying now you're now you're in the game you know what I'm saying? no matter how big or small you are all spotify did was put it in ink what we were all thinking anyway you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying 
Because if you looked at an artist and they have that less than a thousand sign, you don't respect that artist. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Or maybe you respect the creativity, but you're like, hey, bro, you got some work to do. You got to grind, man. You got to go learn about some marketing and branding and content. All Spotify did was go, hey, you're right. We just not also are not going to pay for that. You're going to have the social stigma that comes with that less than a thousand stream mark on your profile, and you're not getting your six dollars mm-hmm. or less than six dollars, your, your forty cents, whatever it is. So I don't know, man. I feel like the barrier could have definitely been higher. I personally would not have been mad at Spotify if they made it like five thousand or ten thousand. I would have understood. You know what I'm saying, like you know, looking at the comments, you would have thought. Motherfuckers thought they was about to make this shit like a million streams or some shit. You know what I'm saying? The way, like, yeah. I don't know, man. I seen some comments on our YouTube video and our Instagram video. I was like, bro, these niggas about to jump off the ledge. And we don't even know what the number is yet. Shit, crazy. Exactly. <laughs> but this to me says that Spotify still has a heart. I don't know about that. They don't say that to me. A heart? I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't think the heart matter. Okay, they got, they got um a little bit of sympathy. Hmm. <laughs> I think they just understand <laughs> the business and how we have to weigh things in this scenario. That thing is just that simple for them. Heart done left at the moment you had all them investors come in. Like the investors don't care about the heart. We got to do what the bottom line do. <laughs> it might have been rooted in heart before when they in the beginning. Yeah, man, they don't care, but, bro. But to be specific, for y'all who still don't get it. Let's talk about the fact that most artists fail to understand that it doesn't take forever to monetize your audience. We had an artist literally begin to take off and make $20,000 from his brand new audience in the same month. But how is that possible? It's because we're in a new era, baby. Yes, you wanna continue to build a relationship over time, but the first time you make money from your audience can happen today if you understand the new age music marketing funnel for artists. So if you wanna hear about this approach and how you can apply it to yourself, I made a completely free video to watch at www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash monetize. You gotta make sure you put the www, or if you're on YouTube, you can find the link in the description and check out how we've helped monetize artists for completely free. I promise it'll completely change how you see things. They say this is designed to demonetize a population of tracks that today, on average, earn less than five cents per month. It's crazy. So it's more targeted at that than anything else. So this is something that they probably see that we can't see. Mm -hmm. You might think, well, on my journey to a thousand streams five cents that's a lie because if i can make six dollars at a thousand streams what you're saying is really people who make five cents a month right five times cents times 12 what's that so yes 60 cents would be 100 that's, streams. Yeah, 60 cents so 10 streams would be six cents so yeah so they're saying the songs they get less a than, year yeah that's what i'm saying yeah. you're talking about 60 cents a year so you're like there's a gap between 60 cents and six dollars like you're also demonetizing all the tracks between sixty cents and six dollars, yeah, right? Like you're saying, yeah, that's what you could say. But likely, right? If we give them the benefit of the doubt, you probably see some data where a, a massive percentage of songs that go beyond that probably hit a thousand. Yeah, uh, you know what I mean. It's like eighty uh, percent of the tracks that get over. You know, 20 streams per month go on to get a thousand per per year, right? But the songs who only get five streams a month, like we're lucky and they <laughs> go down from there. Like, they probably have some type of data like that. Um, that they always, you know, you know, keep some extra data in the tuck just in case things get too hot. <laughs> Because, they, hey, trust me, there's always more, man. Like, there's rollouts, and they, they test the temperature, and then we come out with this. But I guarantee you, so there's two perspectives. You got the rollout perspective of Spotify. Hey, let me test the temperature and just give out certain information, and then we'll let them know a 1,000 mm-hmm. um, streams, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right? So we can let them know later. That's one perspective, and that would have been true if they released later. I don't think that's true in, in terms of what's happening here. You know what I think this is? This is journalists controlling the story, and they wanted to get double views. They're greedy <laughs> with the views. I'm telling you, bro, it happens in sports. It happens everywhere. 
where the journalists will already have the information and they'll milk that thing just so they can get the views. And now we're at a high. Let's double back and go ahead and drop another article bomb. So now we get those views instead and respect to y'all for doing so. I get the game and that's how y'all get paid. I just don't get why they would, you know, bomb our Sunday like this. Like, why not just, you know, kick the week off strong and hit Monday? You know Less saying? happening, man. That's fair. That's a good point. Hey, we get people's <laughs> attention, and then you write it's fresh in the office. It's a it's a uh, morning water cooler conversation for those who still, you know, venture into buildings when they wake up. That's a good point, man. You know, all the labels gonna walk in Monday morning. You know, pull it up, spit their coffee. I'm like, oh my god, we gotta you know, meet about this <laughs> hey, you see right that? now. You seen that ex- uh, You see, seen that article? Yeah, man, I saw that. that was crazy. Start to see the post. The fact that Spiritual Word posted it so quickly is still wild to me. Oh yeah, no, that shit moving now, man. That that was the first I seen break. I, I've seen it on like two other pages since then, you know. And hopefully, we the fourth in terms yeah. of the, the internet spirit. But some TikTok are gonna beat us to it. I promise. I already know, but <laughs> like, they gonna they gonna beat us there. But I don't know, man. It's, it's just it's like I said. One, I just. It's not as bad as I thought it was. It was gonna be. Um, it feels very anticlimactic. To your point, the journalism thing makes a lot more sense because mm-hmm. of how anticlimactic it is. It's just like, mm-hmm. damn, bro, I was, I was just waiting for a gut punch number, bro. Ten k, twenty k, something yeah. crazy, bro. Something that we could, the people could ride over. You know what I'm saying? But yep. if you riding over a thousand streams, man. Then, you know, you got, you That's got, right. big, you got bigger issues to worry about. All is well that <laughs> ends well, for some people. Yeah. <laughs> But what we're about to see is, you know, part of why artists, you know, struggle because they don't have unions, they don't have togetherness, and we will see the tidbit of classism. Classism ain't bad when you're on the right side of it at the right time. Yeah, bro, you making, it's, you making it's wrong st- times on both sides, by the way. But you know, it's not bad. You know what I'm saying, bro, this situation, man, you making seven twenty a month or more, bro, you chilling. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You making six oh one a month or more, you chilling. Um, you know. It's hard for me to envision the artists that I see that I feel like take it seriously. And then, of course, the artists that obviously take it seriously, to your point, being bothered by this. You know, like a lot of the artists I had conversations with, because my, my artist circle at this point is all artists who take it very seriously. Either they're doing, you know, millions of streams or at least doing a couple thousand a month. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? If I talk about like my, my underground artist friends and like, they really didn't care. You know what I'm saying? They was like, oh, like, you know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you will see. And that's what I mean about the classism statement. And I know that, look, in my future, 20 years from now, they'll probably be trying to snipped up and use against me. You know what I mean? When I'm running from office in a, a month or so before I decide to attract it, because I'm like, damn, y'all done snipped up all the pie clips and got me looking crazy. But <laughs> 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 repurpose and shit. But no, but really, like, so many artists will realize, oh, I'm not affected by this and almost buy into the idea of why this is justified and things will move on. Yes. It was an uproar. Yes. Media outlets, <laughs> you know, got y'all in a frenzy, just like music business worldwide and the, the main publications that sold the, the article version of it, got your attention, got your eyes and views. The YouTube videos, the influencers, and and all the pages that post it and attribute it to the scare got your views and attention as well. And this is why I say artists, you know what I mean? Like, don't buy into all this evil, 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 because you think people you, people selling you this just because they agree with you. But half the time, people also pushing that agenda just because they know that's going to get your attention, but it's putting you to a detriment. We are, look, we're moving on from this. <laughs> a thousand streams per track. One zero. There are zero. some things to argue about it or not. If y'all yeah. have a a, a a solid debate of why you think that that should change, I would love to know um, what that is or a better business model. We do have some other business models that could work better potentially, um, but I would like to know what y'all think in terms of different business models that y'all feel like would be fair, uh, bot friendly in terms of stopping bots, and then also um, put the money where it's supposed to go. Other than that, this is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary. If you could so kindly not only subscribe, but view the next video because we got a gem for you floating somewhere above Mia Corey's head. Check it out as we go deeper into this conversation and more. Peace.